I, I'm walking here and I, uh, I'm talking to the Lord and I wanted to grab the camera because this is really important. I've had some opportunities to minister so, to some people and I've missed, I've missed the, I missed the opportunity. I didn't take the opportunity. The last person was a 90 year old who, um, I, within two days he died. He wasn't supposed to die. He was only coming to the hospital to get over um, a, a COPD exacerbation and then he died. And he didn't know the Lord because he talked about other people on other planets and how old the earth was. And of course, he didn't know the Lord. He wasn't saved. So I got, I got to thinking, how would I approach somebody about, about that? You know, how do you approach somebody? And my, uh, my father-in-law right now is not doing well. And he keeps saying, I'm not religious. Um, and he's trying to find a way to fix his lungs stem cells. I mean, he's, he's doing bad. No stem cells are going to, going to fix him. And I got to thinking, what would I tell him? What do I need to tell him? Well, number one, man did not create man. So of course we don't know how to stop death. We don't have the answers. We cannot stop death by surgery. We cannot stop death by stem cells. We cannot stop death by certain medications. We cannot save ourselves from death. Pure and simple. Man does not have the answer. There is only death in our answers. <coughs> so that's number one. So the only thing person who can save you that has the answer is the one who created us and that's God who sent his son Jesus to die for you and forgive you of everything that you've done in your life all your sins all your all the horrible things you've done everything every time you cheated someone every time you lied every time you stole something every time whatever it was Adultery, fornication, whatever it is, washed away from his blood. And when he washes you clean, because he died on the cross, and because he rose, he defeated death, and therefore now you are defeated in death. You are defeated in death. Jesus defeated death, so therefore when you come to him, the only man, the only Savior, he can give you eternal life. No man can do that. No surgery, no stem cell, no research. They can all extend your life, but inevitably we are all going to die. We are all going to die. It is a fact. It's just when. It's just a matter of when. So what is the answer? Do you want to die with no hope? You put your hope in man and he extends it for a little bit and then death is still there looming? Or do you put your hope in a savior that already defeated death and can give you eternal life? Life where there is no more pain, no more suffering, no more COPD where you can't breathe, no more cancer. No more hurt. Where your body is new. You can breathe. You can love. You can have joy and peace eternally. It's a beautiful thing. But man isn't going to give you that. So Jesus did not make it hard. For in fact, on the cross, the thief that was next to him, there were two. And the one thief scoffed. And right to the end, that thief denied the Messiah. But the other thief recognized him and he knew, he knew that this was the man who could forgive his sins. And Jesus said, I will see you in eternity. And that thief, I'll guarantee, is going to be in heaven with all of us in that eternal kingdom. Now, don't try to wrap your mind around what heaven is like. And don't try to take 
what man has tried to instill in our minds and distort it, thinking, oh, we're going to be flying around with harps and wings. And, you know, that, that scares people and they don't understand. So, you know what? Then they're like, oh, I, 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 can't, I can't even think about heaven. Oh. You know, and it prevents them from believing. It prevents them from going, going to Christ and being saved. And that's what Satan wants. Satan wants that distortion. So you can't even comprehend what heaven is. So why would you want it? You got to remember, Satan plays a big part in this too. There is real evil out there. There is a real spiritual warfare. So when you come to Christ, you have to set your heart and your mind on the fact that he did die. This was God's son who came in the flesh. He was the word and they killed him. They murdered him. They crucified him. They put him on the cross and that was supposed to happen. And he rose and people saw him. People saw him after his death. The tomb was empty. The Roman soldier stabbed him in the side. And the veil was open. And people saw him. In fact, the first person that saw him was, I believe, Mary. And she freaked out. You know, she ran back and, and they didn't believe her. I think it was Thomas, doubting Thomas. And, and Jesus is like, look at my hands. He was real. He was alive. He came back in the flesh. And then what he did, after he came back in the flesh and all these disciples and people saw him, these people were not delusional. This is historical. They saw him after his death. And then he came into the upper room and he left his Holy Spirit with them. And that Holy Spirit is him. That's part of him that when you come to accept Christ, he comes into you. He comes and dwells in you. You know, we forget that we're not just flesh. We are spiritual beings too. And I know this as a nurse because I've seen people die. And I've seen the separation from the body and the spirit. I have seen it with my own eyes. When people die, their body is left and it is nothing but a piece of flesh. It's unbelievable what it what is left. But you can you can feel when that spirit leaves. And I've witnessed it. So there is life after death. We do have a spirit. So come to Christ today. Accept him as your savior so that you do not need to fear death. Death is not our enemy anymore. God defeated it. And he's waiting for you to come to him so that when you die, today, tomorrow, next year, whenever it is, he will be waiting for you. He'll be waiting for you. And you have eternity then to live. And it's going to be a beautiful thing. You will be loved. And it's a love that you'll that you've never known. I have missed some opportunities to minister and it, and, it, and, and it just proves, it just proves. You know, here I am and, and I've got powerful testimonies. The Lord is working in my life and I missed some opportunities to minister. And then in a the blink of an eye, the person's dead the next day. Dead the next day. My friends, we never know when our time is up. We are all going to die. And the fact is, we can't plan our death. It's not like a planned vacation. Well, you know, I'm going to die when I'm 88. Or I'm going to plan. You know, I'm going to plan. You don't plan for death. When it comes, it comes. And sometimes it comes way before you planned for it. it happens every day. People die every day unexpectedly. Poof, I go into work, the guy's dead. Poof, I go into work, the other guy's dead. I go into, tra into the ER, trauma, somebody's dying. Just like that, on vacation, poof, plans changed. I'm living proof, when I had my bike accident, poof, huh, all the plans in the world changed. We need, as followers, to really get serious about planting seeds 
and ministering to people who don't know the Lord because we all have a date and we don't know when it is and how sad it is that these people are being taken and Satan still owns them. <laughs>